My name is Clifford Lansbury, I'm one of the partners here at Goranges and I've been specialising in paintings for getting on for 20 years now. Typically here at Goranges we see an awful lot of 19th century art, oils and watercolours that were the bread and butter of the antiques trade for many many years, really right through from you know, the uh, Victorian period through to the late 1980s, 1990s, and then coming up to year 2000, we saw this big change in taste, which happened across the board, and a lot of those traditional pictures are now not so desirable, and other things that were perhaps frowned upon as being unfashionable and not so uh, traditionally correct uh, are now very much in vogue, and we're looking at a whole different reasons for why things have value and for why people want them. Valuations are based really on three things. What the item is, what the condition is, and what the demand for that item might be. So, is it by the hand of the artist, or is it a copy, or is it a fake? Is it in good condition? Is it in lovely original order, or has there been lots of overpainting or water damage or something like that? And then finally, what's the market view on that item? Is it in fashion? Is there going to be lots of demand? Or is it something that is really quite difficult to sell, either due to fashion or perhaps due to what the depiction is? It might be something unfashionable like a dead bird, for instance. <laughs> the main things that would devalue a painting would be, obviously it needs to be correct, it needs to be in good condition, but that the subject matter is going to have a big factor. So if we look at portraits, traditionally a young pretty lady is more saleable than a grumpy looking elderly lady. There's all kinds of factors that come in and then these factors change over time. So what may have influenced desirability back in the 1980s uh, could have a different, different take on it now in uh, the uh, 21st century. Let's look back to round about when I started in the 19, late 80s and what was in demand were William Russell Flint prints. You couldn't get your hands on enough of them. There were London auction rooms putting on specialist sales of them and some of them were making several thousand pounds. This is for a limited edition colour print. Now, the Russell Flints have died a death now and they have dropped out of fashion. Generations have moved on. People don't want what their parents or grandparents hung on the walls so much. So those Russell flints are now making about £100 each and what are they all wanting now? Well, Terry Frost, very desirable, got a number of those uh, coming up in one of our sales next month. Uh, we also see John Piper as being very desirable and exactly the same sort of colour print in a way, these limited edition colour prints are all the rage and they're changing hands at around about £1,000 depending on the item. If we look at an artist like Lowry, Lawrence Stephen Lowry, the limited edition colour prints uh, of his works have come right up and they were fairly inexpensive to buy. You might spend £150-£200 10 years ago or so. Now we're seeing those change hands at 1000 upwards. Some have made 10000 even more. So it's all about fashion and the pitfalls of fashion obviously if you're buying are that although you like it now because everybody else might give it 20-30 years and your, your cherished valuable possessions might not be as valuable or cherished by the next generation. So we see things come and go. Um, Doily John, classic example, I'm showing over my shoulder we've got some there. Bright, gaudy, jazzy looking pictures, not respected in the 80s and 90s, very low opinion of them. Now we've got a massive demand for them, so a picture that was £100 20 years ago is now quite comfortably £1,500, £2,000. So the whims and wherefores of fashion change over time, and as auctioneers and valuers, we try to keep a pace with that um, and advise people on both uh, when to buy and what to sell. But it, it's really down to taste and personal choice. Depending on your budget, there's all sorts of areas you could look at. Contemporary is something we don't particularly get involved in, and that really is probably the highest risk because you're buying, usually at gallery prices, quite high, and you're just rolling the dice to see whether that artist will become more desirable over time, and very few of them do, to be frank. The majority do not 
become more valuable. But there's always one or two, Tracy Emmins, the, the, the Hockneys of the world, whose works have, have shot up in value. In terms of what you should buy if you're coming to auction, then the old adage is buy what you like, and then at least if it's gone down in value, you still like the painting. Perhaps not quite as much, because you pay lots for it, but you still like it, so that's the key thing. Beyond that, there are areas that are certainly undervalued at present, so classic Victorian oil paintings are very good value for money, for what you're getting, as long as you're buying the correct picture in good condition, so talk to the auctioneer first. Then modern British is where all the money is. It looks good in modern interiors, a lot of demand for that and modern prints. I think there's a fair argument that those pictures are still going to motor on for the next 20 to 30 years. After that, who can say? So yeah, go with what you like, but take some advice from auctioneers and valuers and other, other dealers perhaps. And yes, move carefully into whatever you're going into. Condition or authenticity is, is, is the key. If you've got it in good condition by the right artist, at least you've got a right eye. If you're thinking of buying for yourself, you should really go along and view it in person. Don't just look at the picture from the front, lift it off the wall, have a look at the back. Quite often the back of the picture is more interesting than the front. You can have lovely old labels and exhibition history and the like. So always, always look around a picture. Don't just look at the, uh, the two-dimensional image. The most memorable picture that we have sold here at Goranges, well it was a painting, um, in terms of value, the highest value item we've sold here at Goranges was a picture which is worked by Godwood that we sold for an all in price of around about a half a million pounds, I was on the rostrum for that so that was kind of fun, it started at around about 50,000 and then crept all the way up. Uh, so pictures generally are the most valuable things that go through sale rooms with the exception of course of Chinese art which also packs a punch every now and then. Um, otherwise other pictures are memorable just for the work we did around them to research them. Um, sometimes we have to take things to specialists and experts and museums and the like and to committees that, that pass judgment on whether a picture is right or wrong. That can be rewarding or incredibly frustrating. I mean, we've all seen the television program Fake or Fortune and, and that really does sum up that process. Uh, so that again is part and parcel of what we do here at Goranges. What we're looking for in terms of sale, well we'd love to have a, a studio collection of any of the great names of the 20th century in British art or we're always looking for a, a long lost Picasso or Renoir or what have you, in theory they're out there but they're far and few between. Generally what's regarded as sort of hidden or lost art has actually fallen down through an artist's family or drifted sideways where works were given to people that were around that artist. So there's still the potential for some, some real special items to, to come out from hiding. Um, but otherwise we're, we're you know, looking for good quality pictures um, that we can put into our, our multi sort of faceted sales.